So greetings and welcome to another segment of Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman. My name is Peter Updike and we've got a long drawn out video for you tonight. So a long one. We got a lot to talk about. First, I want to invite all of my friends and subscribers and people that follow me on YouTube and anyone else for that matter to the True Heart Ranch in Sumter County. That's in Webster in Sumter County, Florida. There's going to be a turkey, a wild turkey extravaganza where vendors will be there. They'll be selling turkey calls, turkey locators, arts and crafts, and people to talk to about turkey hunting. It's absolutely free, and uh, there'll be food and lots to see. I will be there. I hope you'll come. I'm going to be peddling my Ocala National Forest Phantom Bug Deer Track pads okay this is a my own personal creation i like having this one this one is a buck from the green swamp i saw this deer and uh yeah i i've got this ca casting that i've made of his track because i never got the deer but i got his footprint it's kind of cool i like having it here i look at it all the time and it has imprinted on my mind what a green swamp big buck looks like. Again, I saw this deer, and he was a very impressive, very dominant, very mature buck. And I went and I made this casting of his track. I did the same thing for the phantom buck in the Ocala National Forest, and I'm going to make those available to you. I'm going to make 10 or 15 of them and, and sell them for 10 bucks a piece if you're interested in having one. But most of all, I want to impress upon you my book, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman, if you know somebody or you yourself are interested in my story it is uh about life growing up from my youth into adulthood and beyond mistakes that i made things that i did things that i should have done and didn't do planes fall out of the sky horses tumble down the mountain all the stories are true There'll be 10 bucks a piece also or if you've got a copy already and you just want to come and visit I welcome your visit. Come, I'll have a setup there, a table, a little bulletin board with pictures on it, and I'll be standing there wanting to meet you and shake your hand. So y'all come to the True Heart Ranch. It's off Highway 471. You can bebop it on your smartphone or on your computer. It'll come right up, tell you how to get there. It's just off of 471. I think it's on the west side of 471. You go down through there through the countryside and the beautiful area there and out in the middle of a pasture will be a barn right and in that barn will be true heart ranch we'll all be there selling talking visiting having a good time y'all come out all right so uh we're going to talk about small game hunting as well um first i got something i want to share with you if you hunted this year and you didn't go to buck, I got a word for you, okay? I've got some encouraging words for you. I went elk hunting in Wyoming. I suppose it was 17 years ago. I, I've been three or four times. I've been to Wyoming three times. I've been to Colorado four or five times. I done lost track. I've been traveling out there going elk hunting, trying to kill an elk. And I'll tell you my elk hunting story someday. But I've been to Wyoming several times, and I hunted on a private ranch. I hunted on a private ranch. It cost me, uh, again, this was about 20 years ago, it cost me $1,500 to hunt four days on a six-square-mile mile, six square mile ranch. Uh, it was a great experience. I really liked going out there. That offer is no longer on the table. But uh, four of us went out together, and what it was was you you got the bunkhouse, and you got a, a, a ranch cook, and uh, access to all the private property. It was a self-guided hunt, and uh, you were responsible for your own well-being other than having the place to stay and, a, and the cook. And it was a great atmosphere. It was $6,000 for four days. And so four of us put up $1,500 each, and uh, we went a couple of years in a row. And it, again, it was a great experience. But the thing that I want to tell you and the thing that I took home from that experience was that there was uh, lots of public land in that area. And the ranch was 
adjacent to that public land, and we had to, we was near Rollins. We were hunting in the uh, Medicine Bow uh, National Forest there in just south of Rollins, Wyoming, and you drove down one of those mountain roads to get to the ranch. It was about 30 or 40 miles off the hard road. It took you another hour or two just to get to the ranch from town, and uh, I was making that trip down there, and there were a few access points that you could go to public land and hunt, and of course, we were hunting opening day. I think it opens on the 15th in Wyoming of uh, October every year, regardless of what day it lands on. They don't open on the weekend. If it's on the 15th, it's on Monday. That's when it opens. If it opens on Wednesday, it opens on Wednesday. It doesn't make any difference. It's October 15th. So I was driving down there on the 14th, the day before the season opened. And everywhere that there was public access, in other words, a trailhead to access public land, there was a swarm, and I say that conservatively, it, there was a swarm, there were, there were probably 10 to 15 vehicles at each access point with camping gear, people setting up camp on the side of the road, and then planning to hunt the next day, I'm talking about a log jam of people, and I couldn't believe my eyes as I drove past, and how thankful I was to have had known people that had connections that gave me the great experience of hunting in the mountains of Wyoming alone and thinking about those people. I saw license plates from Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Georgia, all over the country with gear and tackle and camping gear and hunting gear piled up on trucks. It was amazing. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. People from California and Oregon and all these places coming to hunt in Wyoming with trailer loads of stuff. There's no exaggeration on my part when I drove past those folks, seeing the passion that they had and how maybe disappointed they were when they found out the access point that they were going to use was going to be used by 20 or 30 people. ATVs and trailers and horse trailers and, and it goes on, the, the chaos. And then I thought about what we have here at home just for a simple little deer hunt or turkey hunt. We don't have any elk in Florida. We got deer and turkeys and wild hogs, right? But here's the thing. This is what we do have. If you're a resident here, and if you live near public land and you're able to access that public land all season long, that would be for like from September all the way into January in some places, that I can leave my home early in the morning, I can go up to Ocala and I can hunt all I want. And I can access all I want. And some folks feel, well, the hunting's really no good. Well, try going to Wyoming. I've been elk hunting in Wyoming three times. I didn't shoot a bull. I went three times. I had I had uh, morning hunts and afternoon hunts. That means I hunted four mornings and four afternoons for three years, three seasons. So you do the arithmetic. That's how often I went out. And I had one opportunity on a bull that I wasn't able to capitalize on. And again, I'll tell you about that another day. But, uh, yeah, when I, when I leave here, I, I can go down to the green swamp and I can hunt all I want. I can go up to Ocala and hunt all I want. If I want to go turkey hunting, I can go to Rich Loam and hunt all I want after the first nine days. If I don't have a quota permit, I can go to a n numerous numbers of wildlife management areas just close to my home. And if you live in Florida, you have that too. I'm here to tell you that we have something here in Florida that maybe you don't realize that we have. And that is the great gift of opportunity to hunt on public land. I didn't kill a deer. I did not see it. I saw two bucks in Ocala and I elected not to shoot. One buck, barely legal. And I just, I, no, I'm not going to shoot that deer. And the other one, I want to shoot. And never got the opportunity to, shoot, to kill him. Yeah, he, he walked away. That's the way it goes. But I have this great place 
that I can go during the week when the opportunity arises and I can learn of the place and hunt it all I want. I see rubs, I see tracks, and I see scrapes. I don't have to wonder if there are deer there. If I go hunting there and I see all of those things, but I don't see any deer, well, then the problem lies with me. How much do I need to hunt to kill one? I don't know. All I know is I didn't get one, but I did see a sign that says there were deer here. And, yeah, I, I can go down to Green Swamp even now and, and hunt. And I, I, I can go in there and not see any people. Because I've done my homework, I know where I can go, and I go often enough, I, I have kind of figured it out. And I'm trying to pass this little knowledge on to you. If you love the outdoors like I do, if you like to hunt and fish and get out there alone and be alone in the wilderness, that's what I like to do. There's nothing I'd rather do than be alone in the wilderness for as long as I, as long as I can handle it. I never, I never grow tired of it. And out of that, down through the years has come some level of success. Not that I'm a great hunter, because I'm not. But I love being out there so much that it's going to lead me towards that success. At least an opportunity, right? At least, if I lived in Wyoming, I'm sure I, because I would just be out there. I'd be out there in the snow, I've been in blizzards, I've been out there in the wind blowing 60 to 80 miles an hour. Man, it's, it's crazy out there, right? If I lived out there, it'd probably be different. But I live here, and this is where I make my home, and I prefer to hunt, for now, public land, because public land is is near and dear to my heart because of the, the atmosphere of adventure. I want to discover new things. I want to be with blue collar people. I want to hunt where the average guy hunts. And, and when somebody asks me, well, do you ever kill a deer up there? And I show them on my cell phone, I show them the, the buck that I killed. You know, that, you know, I relive that hunt every time I show somebody the deer I killed in the Ocala National Forest. It's not that I'm a great hunter. It's just that I was there because I love the place. All right. So if you didn't get your deer this year, think about that. Think about what we have and that we don't have to really fight with other people if we just figure it out, right? And uh, there's plenty of room out there in all of our management areas for us to go and experience and learn as we go. Regardless of what you did this year, don't think about giving up because next year is a new year and you're going to build upon your successes as well as your failures, until it leads you to that final destination, that desired outcome, right? All right. So with that comes small game season. We're going to talk about small game season here for a minute. Um, I saw while I was on one of my hunts in the Ocala National Forest something that surprised me, and I'll tell you what it is. Now, if you go small game hunting here in the state of Florida, the three things that I look for when I want to go small game hunting is rabbits, squirrels and quail i like those three those are my target species now if i shoot a coon or a possum i have people that i know that might be interested in having that but i i don't want to shoot anything that i'm not going to eat i probably won't shoot possums or coons un unless they're available for you know if somebody's available to have it I've got customers that come in at work that would love to have a raccoon, but uh, I, I've never eaten a raccoon. I hear that you can eat them, but I, I just never have, and uh, don't don't really plan on doing it. My my whole point is let's not shoot something just for the hell of it. Let's shoot it, bring it home, and eat it. Now, if you shoot coons, uh, you might be helping with the turkey population here and there. If you like to coon hunt, uh, yeah, that's a that's that's an a, an advantage, okay? And uh, yeah, those those are the those are the critters that I hunt. Now, while I was in the Ocala National Forest deer hunting, some of you may be new to hunting and not realize this, so I'm gonna point it out to you, okay? That we have 
two subspecies of squirrel, maybe three. I, I don't know if the flying squirrel is really a squirrel. I guess it is. But uh, we have the gray squirrel, and we have something called a Sherman's fox squirrel. Now, if you say the word Sherman's in front of that fox squirrel, you'll be a true blue Floridian. Somewhere down in the line, they thought it was okay to drop the name Sherman's. I don't know who Sherman was, but he's the one that named the Sherman's fox squirrel. And for years and years and years here in Florida, we called it the Sherman's fox squirrel. So if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about as a true blue Floridian, use the word Sherman's. But I have here a fox squirrel that I shot in the Trout Lake Swamp when I was, I don't know, 17, 18 years old. They were legal then, but you cannot shoot a fox squirrel now. So if you go small game hunting, and if you see a fox squirrel, you may think, wow, look at that big old squirrel. And you'll shoot it, not realizing that they're protected. You can't shoot fox squirrels in the state of Florida. And I have one right here. Right here, we got the little gray squirrel. You probably saw him on the other video. This is my gray squirrel. He came with the house. He was on the fireplace mantle. And uh, that was that was a, quite a surprise. I am sure glad to have him. He's got a little nut there. I don't know who mounted this squirrel. All I know is he came with the house. But that's my little gray squirrel. And here, I have the Trout Lake Swamp Fox Squirrel. Like I said, I shot him when I was 17, 18 years old. Down in the swamp, I would take my little john boat and go back there in the swamp and I'd hunt squirrels and rabbits and whatever during hunting season. And uh, this is a true blue Florida Sherman's fox squirrel. Now you can tell a Sherman's fox squirrel by the fact that he's twice the size, maybe even more than twice the size of a common gray squirrel, which is your target species, okay? These squirrels are many times tricolored. They're black rusty rusty brown and uh, gray and brown they have multiple colors and they're oftentimes seen on the ground they lope around the ground uh differently than what a squirrel would their 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 lope and their gant is, is quite obvious but that is a sherman's fox squirrel so um yeah if you see one of them i saw one in ocala i had never seen one in the scrub before but uh I heard it first, and then it showed its showed its its itself uh, high in a tree, and then it got down on the ground and loped across right in front of me. I wish I had gotten a video of it, but right there in the old counters, he had a black face and a and a gray and rusty brown body and, and a big long tail. It was it was really cool experience seeing that fox squirrel. And I thought to myself, you know, if a guy came in here and didn't know any better and was squirrel hunting, that that he'd shoot he'd shoot that fox squirrel. Just like that, and and uh, not knowing any better, and it would be a sad day for that squirrel, and it's a sad day for conservation and for hunters because we we conserve wildlife, right? But through hunting, and we don't want to accidentally shoot something that we're not supposed to. So the Sherman's fox squirrel is on that list. So I was watching a YouTube video. I'm gonna close with this. I was watching a YouTube video of a guy squirrel hunting just out of curiosity, and I noticed that he was walking aimlessly through the woods and had his little camera on, was documenting the experience, and he, he did not get any squirrels. Now, if you sit spend time in a tree stand like I do, maybe you'll notice that when you get in your tree stand, you don't see anything for maybe an hour. Maybe sometimes it's two hours, and all of a sudden, the squirrels just show up. Well, squirrels in the wild are switched on, okay? They are... They are struggling to survive just like everything else. And uh, if they see a human, many times wild squirrels, when they see a human walking through the timber slowly, they will they will disappear very quickly. And uh, you won't get an opportunity to shoot them. You just about always have to sit down and wait for them to show up. And many times you'll see two or three at one time, and maybe you'll get a chance at one, and then you'll shoot it, and then maybe you'll need to move and go to another spot and wait there as well. But um, you may you may wonder what do I go uh, squirrel hunting with? I've got uh, this is my stainless steel. This is a stainless steel Ruger 1022, and it's it's a it's one of my favorite rifles. It's again it's got this uh, laminated stock, 
and uh, it's got this magazine holds 10 rounds and uh, I don't have a scope on it I, at this point I don't I don't need a scope on it but I've killed a lot of squirrels with this rifle and it's just a, a little automatic 22 now during small game season you're also able to shoot wild hogs and uh, if you get an opportunity on a wild hog well I'll be just a headshot if I get the opportunity to shoot a headshot with the with the 22 I also carry I also like to carry sometimes I'll carry a shotgun with me when I go small game hunting if I go small game hunting with my shotgun I'll carry a pistol and this is the pistol that I carry it's a uh, I bought that I bought that 1022 in 1989 in the Walmart I bought stainless steel with the laminated stock and i think i paid like a hundred and thirty dollars for it it was so cheap when you compare to what you pay today i can't believe it but i've got here i've got a um a colt pistol i bought this colt pistol this would be the first pistol i bought after my divorce from my first wife it's the first gun that i bought i was free this is a uh, 22 and it's um a new frontier Colt pistol. It's got it's got the old navy polymer grips with the engraving on them with the eagle and the Colt there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's really a cool gun. It's in perfect condition. I I like to take this thing hunting, and uh, I'm not a very good shot with it, but I like it. And if I take my shotgun, well then I'll take my pistol with me and and. Uh, shoot rabbits or whatever with it so uh i like to take my pistol every now and then i don't take my pistol deer hunting because it's just too cumbersome i really don't see the point but uh, when i go small game hunting i'll strap this thing on my belt and i'll tote it down through the woods and it's pretty cool so i hope this uh video is already 21 minutes long and all i knew it was going to be a long one because i had a lot of stuff to cover i appreciate all of you like and subscribe to the channel if you want to remember true heart ranch that's february Fourth, True Heart Ranch. Love you guys. See you. Bye.